ChatGPT is seeing huge growth in user numbers. Between August and December 2024, weekly active users grew from 200 million to 300 million. That's a 50% increase in weekly active users in just four months. Meanwhile, as we've covered recently, there are actually some signs that Google is starting to lose users in some territories. Of course, this means that many marketers are asking the question, how do I get ChatGPT to recommend our brand, our products, and our services? Well, here at Exposure Ninja, this is exactly what we do for our clients. We implement the stuff I'm going to show you in today's video to help them get more traffic and sales from AI tools like ChatGPT. We're going to break this topic down into two sections. First, we're going to talk about how ChatGPT actually works, what makes it recommend particular brands, products and services in its answers. And then we're going to cover what you need to do to make sure it's you being recommended. So how does ChatGPT actually work? What's going on behind the scenes here? Now, before we talk about how ChatGPT works and what's going on behind the scenes, let's talk about a type of search that people are really familiar with. Google. When you search on Google, a list of websites is surfaced that match the keyword, the search term that you've searched for. This whole thing is called web search, and the way to get visibility in web search is SEO, search engine optimization. We got loads of videos, podcasts, and books about search engine optimization, so I'm not going to go into loads of detail here. But the important thing is that SEO isn't sufficient for ChatGPT. It's one piece of the puzzle, but it's not the only thing that you need to do. And that's because ChatGPT is doing some extra things that Google doesn't. Come and geek out with me for a second. This research paper published last year talks about this new field of GEO, Generative Engine Optimization. And in it, there's a great diagram which explains exactly how these tools are working. This query is then reformulated or broken into chunks. These chunks are then searched for in a search engine, which produces web results, which are then summarized, which is then turned into a response, which is then given back to the user. But let's talk through an example to make this more real. Now I'm gonna search on ChatGPT for something fairly long and rambly. I need to find an iPad case that's robust enough to survive me dropping it but doesn't look like something from a building site. I also don't want it to be black. A bright colour would be much better. Now this is what's called a long tail query. It's very likely that nobody on earth has ever searched for this exact question. So what ChatGPT will do is break that query up into smaller searches which it will then run in the background. ChatGPT doesn't show us these reformulated queries but another AI search tool Perplexity does. Here I search for Perplexity for exactly the same query and I can see that Perplexity has broken this up into simpler underlying queries like robust iPad case drop resistant bright color and durable iPad case colorful design drop protection. Now once the AI tool has run those web searches it then looks at the content on the websites found in those web searches kind of regurgitates it or reformulates it and turns it into an answer. Now although we can't see the underlying web searches that ChatGPT has run in the background we can see the sources of information that have contributed to this answer. For example, in this search, I can see that Reddit, nymag.com, YouTube, Mac Rumors Forum, and the Apple discussion section have all contributed content to this answer. When we run this same search on Google, we see that Google is really struggling to give a good answer to this question because there aren't too many websites that include the exact terms being searched here. So we end up getting some very general articles about best iPad cases, not really referencing the nuance of the search that we've made. Another way that ChatGPT is different to Google is it actually has its own inbuilt knowledge already. If you run a search like who is the most famous footballer ever, ChatGPT doesn't need to do a background web search to answer that question. It can answer it with its own knowledge. And its use of this inbuilt knowledge can also extend to some product searches as well. Here I've asked ChatGPT for the best budget-friendly weekender bags, and it's given me some specific product recommendations, even though it hasn't searched the internet to surface these. This means if we want to be recommended in searches like this, we need to make sure our products, brand services are being found in the underlying trend data that is powering these models and we'll come back to that later on. So why does the process of understanding how ChatGPT works actually matter? Well because if we're going to get our product brand or business recommended in these searches we need to make sure we're optimizing our website content and our marketing strategy for each step of this process. That's why SEO alone won't necessarily get you recommended by ChatGPT. It's an important component for sure but there's a lot more to it than that. What we need moving forward is something 
something that we're calling generative engine optimization, or you'll sometimes see called answer engine optimization, or whatever the industry terms it. But it's actually a new and more advanced process to get these tools recommending your brand products or services than it has been for the more traditional web search engines. Okay, so now we know how the tools work, what do we actually need to do? There's three things. The first is to make sure that you're being found in the underlying web search, i.e. when ChatGPT is breaking that query up into sections and running those web searches in the background, how can you make sure that your website is being found in the first place? Well, ChatGPT is powered by Bing, mostly. OpenAI's own staff have confirmed that ChatGPT does use Bing, but we also suspect that they are using other indexes as well, including potentially their own. So of course, making sure that your website content is being found in the Bing search results is really important, and the key to this is basically SEO. <laughs> We've covered that loads in other podcasts, other videos, and through our books. So I'm not going to go into loads of detail on exactly how to do that here. But make sure that your website is being indexed properly through Bing Webmaster Tools. OpenAI does have its own crawlers as well, but really how your site is showing up in Bing Webmaster Tools seems to be the closest proxy for how your site is showing up to ChatGPT's underlying web search. And by the way, if you need help with any of this, this is exactly what Exposure Ninja does for our clients. If this type of generative engine optimization is a priority for your brand, and you're interested in working with us to do this stuff for you, then you can request a free website and marketing review from the team here at Exposure Ninja. Just go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. There's a bit of a questionnaire for you to fill out about your marketing goals, and one of the team will then get in contact with you to analyze how your brand, your products and services are showing up in these tools already, and work out how to get your brand products and services recommended more by these tools, because it does depend on each individual business. We'll then put all of this information into a video which will send to you usually within three to five working days. It's an incredible service. The feedback we get on this is amazing, but not everyone is eligible. So you do need to apply for this free review. So if you're interested in working with us to do this stuff for your brand, go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review today. Okay, so once you've got ranking in the underlying web search, the next thing that you need to do is make sure that your content is formulated in a way that makes ChatGPT more likely to reference you or link to you or mention you. One way to do this is to use specific data in your content. ChatGPT is really smart, but it doesn't know everything. And in order to give more reliable answers, you'll often notice that ChatGPT likes to refer to underlying sources of data. For example, here I've asked it, what is likely to happen to London residential property prices in 2025-2026. OpenAI's large language models would have an opinion on this. They would be able to give an answer. But in order to give a more reliable and credible answer, they've actually referred us to a number of different websites pulling out perspectives and specific statistics. For example, they've referenced the statistic from the estate agency Savills, another one from JLL, and a different prediction from Hamptons. If these companies hadn't shared this specific data on their websites, ChatGPT wouldn't have mentioned them in this answer. If we go back to that generative engine optimization research paper I mentioned earlier, they say, among other things, we find that including citations, quotations from relevant sources, and statistics can significantly boost visibility with an increase of over 40% across various queries. Another way to get your content featured in ChatGPT is to talk about your first-hand experience in something. Because whilst these AI tools know a lot, they actually have no individual experience at anything. And you'll often find that they use first-hand experience that they find on the internet to back up any suggestions and recommendations they make. In this example, ChatGPT and I have been having a conversation about the maximum efficiency of a heat pump in a Victorian house. And it's given a very detailed answer based on its internal knowledge, right? It's even given me the equation to calculate the coefficient of performance. All of this information came from ChatGPT's own knowledge. But when I asked the follow-up question, asking ChatGPT to recommend me a particular manufacturer that could produce a heat pump which would be suitable for this, it actually referred to an individual blog from someone who had installed a heat pump in their Victorian property. But there's loads of content online about heat pumps. So why this blog? Because I've got to be honest, this blog isn't exactly the most famous website in the world. Well, this blog, because it shares first-hand experience of exactly what we're talking about. And notice that this blog also does lots of the other things really well that the research paper found. For example, sharing statistics and citing its sources. Now, the use of this blog 
in ChatGPT's answer means that the manufacturer of the heat pump used in this blog actually ends up being the top recommended manufacturer for this query. Think about that. This is now a commercial search for a product that's going to cost five figures. And the answer has essentially been manipulated by the fact that ChatGPT has chosen an individual's personal blog to pull out the manufacturer recommendations. Now you see why generative engine optimization is going to be so profitable over the next few years. Before we move on, we do have to touch on the fact that some publications have a paid partnership with OpenAI where they get more visibility than others in the answers. For example, here I've asked what's the carry on luggage allowance for American Airlines. This is an answer that ChatGPT has gone to the American Airlines website to source, which is a good idea because that is a high authority source on this topic. But it's also rather inelegantly added some recommendations to articles about potential changes to American Airlines carry on policies, including an article from Wired, which is owned by Condé Nast. And two of the websites cited here are Wired and Business Insider. Wired is owned by Condé Nast and Business Insider is owned by Axel Springer. Both of those parent companies companies have a deal with OpenAI to use their content in ChatGPT's answers. So the key to getting ChatGPT to recommend you is first, make sure you're ranking in the underlying web search. And then secondly, provide the source of content that ChatGPT likes to reference. The third and final key is getting found everywhere. If that sounds like a big overwhelming job, let me show you a couple of client examples to illustrate. In this search in ChatGPT, I've asked what are the best iPad Air cases? ChatGPT has recommended a few products, including the top recommendation, our client Zugu case. If we click to view the sources of this answer, we will see that ChatGPT has referenced a whole bunch of websites, including Zugu case's own website. But it's also pulled its recommendations from third party websites that mention and recommend Zugu, for example, Wired and Reddit. So the key to getting recommended in this type of conversation is to make sure that you are being seen on lots of the websites that ChatGPT tends to source its answers from. This can be mainstream media publications like Wired in this case, but it can also equally be trade publications or niche content sites. If you're a B2B company, going to your trade publications and getting featured in articles can be really straightforward because often these trade publications are desperate for good information. Our digital PR team at Exposure Ninja is fantastic at getting our clients recommended in these sorts of publications, as well as the more mainstream ones. But it's also really important to get your business products and services recommended on any website that you possibly can. Because when the underlying large language models that power ChatGPT are being trained, they are being trained on vast amounts of internet information from a huge range of different websites. And if they see your brand, your products and service being mentioned in lots of different places online, that helps them to build up a greater understanding understanding of what you're about. And that means for some of these conversations where ChatGPT doesn't need to go online, it can still recommend you. Let's take a look. So this search for what are the best durable iPad cases has made some recommendations, again, including Zugu case, but this time ChatGPT hasn't gone online to make those recommendations. It's just used the information that it's ingested during its training. So the important strategic decision you have to make is what do you want your product, brand and services to be? known for because the concepts that are attached to your brand when the content is being ingested online are really important. For example, another one of our clients, skincare brand The Ordinary, there's loads of content online about how The Ordinary is such good value and how it's so high quality. So when these large language models are being trained, they're ingesting lots of information about The Ordinary, high quality, good value. That means when you ask ChatGPT, what's the best value skincare brand, it coughs up the ordinary. So there you have it. Three steps to getting ChatGPT to recommend your brand, products and services. Firstly, rank in the underlying web search. Make sure you're being found in the web search that ChatGPT is doing in the background. Secondly, make sure that you're producing the type of content that ChatGPT wants to reference. Go heavy on the data, the statistics and share your first hand experience. Provide the sorts of things that ChatGPT can't get from its own inherent knowledge to make sure that you're being linked to wherever possible. Thirdly, make sure you're being found everywhere online through digital PR. Mainstream publications, niche publications, user generated content sites, blogs. The more places that you're found online, the greater the chance that ChatGPT finds you when it's doing one of its underlying web searches. But also being found everywhere improves the knowledge the underlying large language models have 
of what it is that you sell. Which brings us to the final point that you need to be really clear on what you want to be known for. Don't forget, if you want help implementing this stuff for your business, the team at Exposure Ninja here are absolutely world-class at this. Go request a free website and marketing review from the team at exposureninja.com forward slash review. Not everybody is eligible for this, so you do need to apply for it. But if you're interested in working on your generative engine optimization in 2025 and beyond, we are the team for you. Until next time, see you soon.